Hey guys, what's up? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. Today I'm with Avi, hey. also, also known as Avi Nash. And he is a travel vlogger, but what's also really cool is that he's a developer who works remotely. So I was like, this would be amazing to speak with him. We're still at VidCon, so let's do this. Welcome, Avi. Thank you, man. Super nice to have yep. you, my man. So talk to us about like your story, how you got started into development, and what company are you currently working with? So uh, I've been programming for nine years now, okay. and uh, most of it has been remote. Uh, since like 2000s, it's, it's been remote. Uh, we had a startup before, which I was a part of, yeah. which was a part of something called Startup Chile. Startup Chile? Have that you heard of that? No. Uh, it's a, a government startup Chile uh, run government program yeah. where you basically, your startup gets $40,000, but the only glitch according to them is you have to move to Chile and work from there for six months. The only little, yeah, yeah that's the, only the catch. Little, yeah, that's that's the, the catch, we are like, we are right. from, I'm from India, yep. so we were in Bangalore, which is the Silicon Valley of India. Yep. And oh, it beautiful, just, I didn't know that. Bangalore is a Silicon Valley of India. Yeah, the, most of the startups in India are in Bangalore. So Got that's it. where it started basically. Okay. So this was in the back of, in 2011. Yep. Um, so we moved to Chile for six months. I had a, and that was the first time I stepped out of the country. Yep. It was fantastic. I've never traveled before. Yeah. And I just loved traveling. Yeah. So since then, uh, I traveled from Chile to Vietnam to Nepal, and I started working online. Yep. Um, but then I met my wife, Got it. Uh, and we both talked Who's about right it. Who's right over there? Yeah. We talked about it, and we took two years off. We stayed in Bangalore, yeah. saved up and uh, started doing this lifestyle and since then we have been traveling for three years now yeah. uh, we've done most of asia and we, we stayed in mexico for six months before coming here so now we'll be in the u.s for a bit and go to south america send us all of that bureau sure. we'll add it in yeah yeah, yeah when you're talking yeah, about yeah, south yeah, asia for sure stuff. yeah so okay, so now you're vlogging, and you're currently working for DigitalOcean. Yeah, I work for a consultancy firm in New York. Okay. Who's clients with DigitalOcean? So one of the projects. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if I can put that on video. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, okay, I, cool. I need to look into that. All good. Uh, but yeah, uh, I work for companies in the U.S. Yep. Um, and uh, and yeah, I freelance. Cool. So you're freelancing and you're working as a full-time uh, yep. remote developer for them? Or not like not full-time. Independent I'm, contractor. I'm an independent contractor. Got it. I would rather do uh, some... I'm right now more most passionate about travel vlogging. Yep. So I want to make videos. That's amazing. So I split my time between coding, coding and, and travel vlogging. That's so, amazing. I love it. So that. yeah. So we make uh, videos on food. So we just go and eat everywhere. That's awesome. So, yeah. That's awesome. And how much, um, how much income are you earning on a monthly basis or yearly basis to be able to kind of have that lifestyle? Because a lot of viewers are like, how much income one is possible to yep. make as a remote? Yep. And then the second question they have all the time is, what income can I be making to be like free like that? So sure. what is it personally for you on a monthly, how much income are you generating on a monthly basis? <laughs> yeah, so if you're traveling in Asia, yeah. All you need is about, for two of us, we need about $1,500 a month. And uh, with a skill set of three years of programming, you can get that. Okay, beautiful. You, you can get there to $1,500 to $2,000. As a freelancer. As a freelancer, if you have your network set and you work for three years, four years, you can get that easily. Right? Got it. $200. Yep. And that's more than enough to travel in Asia. That's beautiful. And Asia And if huge. you're in India, that how far would the $1,500 or $2,000 a month would take you uh, if you live uh, in India? Uh, a lot. Uh, in the cities, it's like uh, it's you're on the border. Yeah. But if you go outside the cities or the, to the smaller cities, it can it can take you a long way. Yeah. But in Asia, it, it does take like Bali, or Thailand, or right. Vietnam. It takes you. You can basically get a, a beach house in Vietnam yeah. for three hundred dollars. Damn, I so remember. Like furnished yeah. beach house in in, in Vietnam for three hundred dollars. That is insane. Uh, per month. Wow. Per month, yeah. So, so one thousand five hundred dollars will allow you to have this lifestyle. Yeah. And save some. Wow. So I'm not, I'm I mean I'm almost nearing thirty now, so I need to think about savings. Yeah. So uh, I need to think about savings too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so. 
so I'm, when I say $1,500, it's not just the expenses and cutting on the borderline. So I'm saying you have a good lifestyle and save. With $1,500, you'll have a good lifestyle and be saving. Exactly. Okay. In Asia. Got it. Uh, if you're in uh, South America, Mexico, yeah. I'm not talking about the US and the Euro because right. the expenses are really high. So, okay, so if you're li it depends what kind of lifestyle you want because you don't need to be making like $100,000 a year nope, you don't, to you, have you, a nope. lifestyle that you can enjoy. It, it, yeah, you, if you choose your country properly, you don't need to. And you're like a digital nomad. Yeah, and we both do it. Like The right. expenses I'm talking about is for two people, not one person. Right. So if you're single, yeah, then it's, it's, even it's, easy. it's even more cheaper to go around. Uh, talk to me how you got your first client as a freelancer. That yeah. is something that's going to be yeah. so valuable to people. So take me through the detail process of like how long were you coding for what did you do to get that first client sure I've been coding Ruby or Ruby on Rails for nine years now nine years and uh, I've been involved in startups since the time I left college so I have a lot of connections in the startup world Beautiful. and uh, once you get that getting a gig out of that it's pretty easy Okay. Uh, so I'm the gig you got was out of the relationships that you yes. had built. Yes. Even even today, every every gig I have is because of the relationships I've built. Upwork and all those things don't really work if you need this lifestyle. According I, I to kinda, me, I yeah, kind of get that. Yeah. yeah. Because Upwork, you're competing on price with other people in the world who don't have this lifestyle. They are in a single place, so they can actually charge go way, way, way down lower, right. than the price you would want for the quality of work you are tough. giving. So the best thing I would say for someone who want to get into this lifestyle is work for three to four years, yep. build up the skill, yep. which and the contacts, yep. and once you once you reach four years, you'll have enough skill to basically sell it to anyone who wants uh, got it anywhere in the world so you get three to four years like really hone down and then develop the skill yes okay now in that time are you saying they're not earning any income no in they are you are earning income but you are in a single place oh i not, see what you're saying do, don't so say tomorrow i'll quit and start or uh, i'm out of college it. tomorrow i want this lifestyle you not get this got it so you need to put in work uh, either when you're in college, yeah. put in the work and build up your uh, GitHub profile. Yep. Like build up, have some projects. Let's say somebody's GitHub a profile. beginner. Yep. Okay. And whether they're going to college or not, let's say they're not in college. Sure. They want to start getting paid from coding. Yep. Okay. What should their process be like? Should they first spend four years like getting the skills down, then try to apply, or should they try to apply, applying as early as three months or six months into their coding experience? Uh, in, into your coding experience, uh, please, once you have the skill to like build a site or something, uh, which is like you can get in six months, yeah. or if you're going to those finisher schools and everything, you can get there even in six early, months, yeah. even earlier, if, yeah. depend upon how quick you are in picking it up. Got it. Uh, once you get there, immediately apply and get um, pro production experience, Beautiful. like all the projects and everything, gigs. Yeah. Don't try to freelance, maybe work somewhere. Right. Get get the experience, Beautiful. which which will help you to better your skill yep. and have the connection. Why do you say don't freelance first? Why do you say get a job first? One is the skill itself. Yep. Like you need you need production experiences to get uh, get to a skill level where people are comfortable hiring you remote or freelance. That's okay. People people are not hiring. if you don't have the, you cannot learn while you are being while you are freelancing. Yep. You can learn while being remote but you need to earn the trust of the employer. Yep. So you will not get the trust of the employer if you're new out of college. Got it. Yeah, you will not. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So, or you, sh you should have enough body of work, open source, have enough body of work to show someone yep. that you can do remote. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You know, lately I've been getting pretty creative with how I'm using Instagram and I'm getting my brother on it too. He's a freelance colorist. And I'm actually, I helped him with it and he's going and going crazy on it. Uh -huh. So he's actually in the last, he started going crazy on Instagram the last five days. Okay. He's actually landed two clients straight wow. from Instagram who are like these companies and they want to pay him for color. Wow. Do you think if somebody started to get creative like that with coding and trying to get clients, 
is that something potentially that they could look down? Because I know you said Upwork and those are not that great. Yes. And let's say somebody doesn't already have like four or five years of relationships built yeah. from college. What would be a creative way for them to start building these relationships? Sure. So one way is uh, if you, if I take my example of you, right? You have built this whole channel. Yep. And uh, and you, what are you selling? You're selling. You're teaching people. Yep. Right. Correct. You can teach. Yes. You, once you learn, you immediately teach. Yep. So once you, that's your product, you can start selling that immediately yep. and use uh, leverage Instagram and YouTube and all these things to sell. Uh, what you're teaching. Correct. So that's the easiest thing you can do. I never did that. Yeah. I wish I did that. But now... Because um, it's really scalable. Yes. Right. It's very scalable. If you can productize something which you have learned, yep. do that. Immediately. What you programming languages um, are your favorite? I'm primarily a Ruby guy. Cool. So I do Ruby all the time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like JS also. But, uh, but JS, the last serious JS I did was in 2011, yeah. when J, it, with the scene was completely different back then. Now I want to get back into it, but maybe some okay. yeah, But I'm a, in a through and through. If video. you ever are open to creating content on Python, like written or whatever, sure. we would love to. I'll feature it personally to our yeah, users. Yeah, I've done Python we before. We can look into it. That'd be great. I would love yeah. that. Okay. Sure. Um, anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Um. In, in what way? Anyway, like maybe you want to give a takeaway or um, tips on freelancing, traveling, anything that you feel you want to share. Sure. So if you get to a stage where you feel you have the skill and the network, don't be afraid to try traveling and programming. It's fun. Yeah. It's really, really, really fun it's if really you can, fun. Yeah. if you can actually. Don't be afraid that oh, I'm gonna lose a job. My suggestion would be go to like some exotic location for two to three months and see how it goes. And eighty percent of the time, you will love. It. It's not for everyone, but I think most of you will love. It. Right. I went to Bali, uh -huh. uh, and there's like a spot called uh, I think they call it Coding Dojo or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the, yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's unbelievable. Were yeah. you there? Ever? Yeah. It's beautiful. We were in Bali for almost two months. Yeah, uh, it's fantastic. It's a it's it's a life experience. I think everyone has to do it yeah. and try it. It's not for everyone, but yeah. please try. It. Got it. Yeah. All right, bro. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. We love having you yeah. on this platform. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This was Avi. We love your face. To follow him, do you have a link or something we can plug? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, have, we have our travel YouTube channel. It's called Second Breakfast. The link will be in the description. We just popped it right yep. here. <laughs> yeah. I already provided the sound, so we don't have to do anything in post now. If you guys are like, uh, if you guys want to explore food from around the world, we eat a lot, me and my wife, and then we travel also, and we could. So just follow us and uh, maybe I'll also start coding like this guy. <laughs> so, and you can ask him questions personally there, questions. right? And then yep. you can get help. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We love your face. This is Avi. This is Kazi. I'll see you in the next video. Fun.